There's bad men in that room. Making a murderer. You, crime scene, the Times Square killer. Sophie, a murderer in West Cork. The family next door. Conversations with a killer. And of course, Dahmer, monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story. Yes, I had a lot of potential names for my video game series before I finally decided on Bruce Place. And it just so happens that all those rejected names went on to become serial killer shows. So not to brag, but I think I picked the right name. But that series has been circling the drain for quite a while now, so not much to brag about anyways. Before I go any further, um, I don't know if the green screen is going to pick up on the color of this shirt. If not, I'll look like a floating head, but which is creepy, but you know what? So are serial killers. So it'd be kind of fitting. I remember seeing this headline on some site that said something like, Is Netflix making serial killers the new superheroes? I think what they mean is, are they making serial killers like role models? And that's what inspired me to make this video. So we can laugh at whoever wrote that article. And then after three hours and 16 minutes of constant laughing, I really thought to myself, why do we love serial killer media? I mean, it's safe to say they're terrible people, right? Right? Please be right. I guess sometimes people like terrible people. That Zac Efron movie got so much crap about making Ted Bundy look charming. And not to defend the guy, but I think he was charming. That's how he got away with all the murders. There's probably not a middle-aged gay guy out there who didn't have a crush on Mark Harmon growing up because they saw him in that movie. And that could be a contributing factor. I'll never forget this one time in high school. The teacher was giving some lecture or something and somehow stumbles upon the subject of Charles Manson. He says something about them and then the girl sitting next to me, somewhere between goth and emo, corrects him about it. It was like, Manson wrote a book called Love Needs Care about his time at the HAFMC. David Smith claims that Manson attempted to reprogram their minds to submit total to- I was so uncomfortable. The teacher was like, oh, I didn't know that. And then she continues, and I was like- Manson gained his first follower at the UC Berkeley campus, librarian Mary Bruner. Then he met runaway- Like, some people know a lot about baseball. This girl knew a lot about Charles Manson. But I don't think serial killers are America's pastime. The only thing I knew about Manson is from that episode of South Park. Remember how it felt to be a child, opening presents on Christmas morning. Anyways, it turns out there's more people like that, that have this obsession with what they call true crime. I call it appreciation of horrible, barely even human people. But I'm a little jumpy. I mean, look at these shirts. Like people, they wear these things? And not to insult whoever design those shirts, you know, good job. I just feel more comfortable around people who wear stuff with, you know, nice little pandas on them. That's nice. me waiting for his date and she shows up in this dress. Hard to imagine, right? I mean, not the part about me going on a date. That happens pff, all the time. Look, you can even buy yourself a throw rug of Clown Gacy. Come in, make yourself at home. Wipe your feet on this sick man's face. Actually, that guy might deserve to have people's filthy shoes all over him. I might have to get one of those things. Netflix needs no explanation, but to date, it has around 60 million U.S. subscribers, which disturbs some media violence specialists. If there are any, that is. At the time of me recording this, over 750 million hours have been spent watching Dahmer, making it the second most watched English language series on Netflix overall. It's become so successful, they're making two more seasons based on two other serial killers to be announced at a later date. Hmm, an anthology series where every season revolves around a different true crime? Isn't that already a show? Hopefully none of these shows will have Cuba Gooding Jr. in them, because that guy forces himself on women. Or David Schwimmer. He's David Schwimmer. So, let's analyze this long-standing fixation with serial killer portrayals. 
According to a recent Morning Consult study, 62% of Americans said they are fans of TV shows or films featuring serial killers, while a quarter of adults identify as avid fans of the genre. Nearly 80% of millennials claim to enjoy serial killer-themed media. Impressive, if you can trust Morning Consult, which I literally just now heard of. 89% of American adults who are interested in serial killer content identified the psychology of the killers as the cause, while 84% cited the suspense as the motivating factor. According to specialists, a lot of viewers are driven to this kind of entertainment because it allows them to escape their own lives and insecurities. It makes them feel better about the way they look. Or because it gives them an adrenaline rush. The reason for this focus, according to Robert Thompson, a professor of media and culture at Syracuse University, may have to do with the fact that people tend to watch Netflix in more private settings. With content like Hot Girls Wanted and Bonding, I second that. You'll find both those shows on my list of recommendations. I'm just kidding, just big mouth and unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Who needs more? Grizzly content can also mesh with the kind of focused yet intense engagement that Netflix desires. The business model of the service is built more on niche audiences with good interests rather than the wide viewership goals of its rivals. The company's algorithms frequently favor the development of consumption of what is already successful so it magnifies any trends. But man is it f***ed up! But despite criticism, the studio clearly won't stop producing this content anytime soon given how well the genre sells. When will the downfall come? Maybe if they start focusing more on the victims and their stories as opposed to recapping the atrocities? Or maybe they're like vampires and serial killers are just a fad. When will it end? Well, eventually they're gonna run out of serial killers, right? It's not like there's gonna be any more. Your intellect is as weak as your dollar. So until next time, don't talk to strangers, and don't be in the same room with Cuba Gooding Jr. If you like serial killers, subscribe. If you love serial killers, give this video a thumbs up. And if you like or love me, do a combination of both. And be sure to brace yourself for Bruce. Bruce yourself. Through the use of LSD and unconventional practices of the sexual genre that would turn his followers into empty vessels that would accept